Okay, round of applause for our next speaker, please. Yeah, hi. So my name is Tim Teller. I work in the Samsung Open Source Group, and I'm here today to talk about um, IoT.js. So um, I'll just give a quick introduction. Um, then I will explain more about the demo I've set up there, and then we can ju just move on to questions. So probably many of you are wondering, what is IoT.js? So uh, essentially, if you want to uh, describe it in one phrase, it's a lightweight version of Node.js. So um, what we're trying to do here is to get um, the success of Node.js into the embedded space. And we really, with embedded space, we, we are really focusing on microcontrollers, which are heavily resource constrained. So <coughs> we're talking about microcontrollers with, let's say, 100 kilobytes of RAM, so really low-end stuff. And uh, one of the design goals of IoT.js is to be backwards compatible to Node.js. So we want people to be able to move easily before, between the two. And um, in terms of implementation, IoT JS really is uh, mostly written in JavaScript. There are a couple pieces um, in C or C++. Um, and uh, the interesting question is how do you run this on a microcontroller? And uh, the solution to that is JerryScript. So JerryScript is a um, really lightweight JavaScript engine we developed from scratch. And um, it's really designed to be used in, in um, environments where there's um, very little RAM. So you can see the, the base footprint is at 10 kilobytes. So um, that can still fit on a, on, a, on a really small microcontroller. And uh, the other important thing to note here is that it's not just, it doesn't just implement some uh, JavaScript subset, but rather it, it really implements the full ECMAScript 5.1 standard. It is written in C. And um, currently, the binary size is around 200 kilobytes, if you compile it for thumb 2. Um, the next question, or a very um, popular question when we, when we start talking about this is, why do you even want to do this? So why do you want to run uh, JavaScript on, on really low-end microcontrollers? And uh, our motivation for, for this is that we really want there are just so many uh, JavaScript developers out there, web developers. We want to give them a possibility to develop for those kind of low-end connected devices in an easy way, in the way they are used to develop also um, for, for, for the web. And um, the other thing is, if you're targeting a really low-end microprocessor, then um, performance is usually not your main concern. It still matters, but uh, it's certainly there's room for a JavaScript engine there, and you can, uh, to a certain extent, you can live with the overhead <coughs> from using a JavaScript virtual machine. And uh, yeah, another side effect is that hopefully you can develop software faster in JavaScript because it's higher level language than let's say C, for example. So. Um, all of this is open source, so both uh, the IoT.js and JavaScript project have been released um, last year. They are actively being developed on GitHub, and um, we are feature complete. Um, we implement the full ECMAScript 5.1 standard. Um, we pass the entire test 262 conformance test suite, so that's really um, all there. And right now we are trying to build up a community around it, get people to use it, um, report bugs, give us feedback. So um, that's kind of where we are right now. And uh, if, you, if you want to get more information about both projects, um, please have a look at uh, javascript.net or it.js.net. Um, we have lots, lots of more stuff there. And um, just to give you an impression on the, on, on the memory consumption, I have a slide here where we, we are running the SunSpider benchmark. And unfortunately, you can't see it here. But so the, um, the blue 
represents JavaScript and uh, red is duct tape. So for those of you who haven't heard about duct tape, duct tape is a, another open source JavaScript engine which aims for a really low footprint. They are not uh, focusing on, on um, the, the really heavily resource constraints environments we, we are doing. Um, it's, it's a little bit more uh, a higher segment. But um, as you can see, even the duct tape numbers are, are very low. Um, but yeah, JavaScript still outperforms that by a significant margin. And you can see even for some of the benchmarks, JavaScript just needs 36 kilobytes of RAM. So uh, it certainly uh, does what it should do. So uh, with that, I, uh, I'll move on to the demo. So uh, we have uh, made a re-implementation of the classic Pong game. And to make it a little bit more interesting, um, this, this is not just running on a single device. This is actually running on, on two devices. And uh, we have a single screen, but uh, each of the devices uh, controls one, one half of it. So the ball um, essentially is passing between two devices. And uh, we have uh, network connectivity here to do that. So I'll just show you the, the diagram. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you can still see it. So um, yeah, um, essentially we implemented a, a simple client server system um, for Pong. And uh, we are running the client on the Raspberry Pi. There you can also see that there's a USB keypad connected to control it. And the uh, computer opponent runs on a microcontroller. And all of it is implemented in JavaScript. So both um, devices are, are running JavaScript code, no JS modules. And, um, but you can see the, the underlying stack running the, the JavaScript code is quite different. So on the Raspberry Pi, we have um, quite a lot of resources. There's one gigabyte of RAM, eight gigabyte of flash. So we can just use the traditional Linux V8, no JS stack. Uh, but on the SCM board, we are uh, much more limited. So the SCM board um, hosts a Cortex M4 ARM microcontroller, and we just have 192 kilobytes of RAM. So we are much more constrained here. We have one, one megabyte of flash. And uh, the, um, the uh, stack there is basically JavaScript, and then on top of that, RT.js. And all of that is hosted on NutX, which is a, an open source real-time operating system. And in this demo, essentially, it provides us the uh, networking stack for the communication. And all of that, this entire stack fits within the one megabyte of flash. And um, yeah, I can show you how so, so it actually works if I move the panel. Um, so you can see it's uh, really... Can you see this from the back? So yeah, it's quite smooth actually, and sending a lot of packets back and forth. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, any questions? I think we have plenty of time for questions. Uh, yeah. Take well, the microphone and move to the person who is asking the question. So obviously, um, it, it depends on the. Obviously, it depends on uh, what code you are running. So certainly, uh, the size of the JavaScript code you are executing also matters. Um, and yeah, uh, but I think this demo ha is around on the on the server is around 100 lines of JavaScript code, and that still fits. So I mean, certainly 50,000 lines won't, won't make it. How often is the garbage collector? And the garbage collector is just a very simple uh, reference counting. Uh, uh, no, actually, market sweep uh, okay. garbage collector. So it's a fairly straightforward implementation. Um, and it's triggered by certain events. I don't actually know for sure. Uh, yeah. Hello, thank you. 
you for your nice talk. Sure. So, um, IoT has problem with security is the main security. Mm -hmm. uh, security is the, main se is the main concern. So, how can you manage it? Do you plan to uh, add some hardened feature in your stack? Do you plan something to to manage security? Uh, um, so, so we um, on the on the JavaScript IoT.js side, we don't have any. Um, we basically don't. Uh, put any effort on uh, security, so that that's something which needs to be provided by another layer. So we are not. That's not our focus, basically. Yeah. One question. Yeah. Sure. Uh, how l how low can you go on the uh, the run side uh, on the uh, STM32? So, for example, can, could you take uh, a Cortex M0 with uh, I don't know 32 kilobytes of RAM and mm -hmm. would it work? Or uh, have you tested how low you can go? Yeah, so, so basically um, the base footprint of the engine right now, if you support the full ECMAScript 5.1, is around 10 kilobytes. So that certainly would still fit. Um, obviously, you would, I think you would probably uh, get into the 32 limit quite fast as when your when program gets a little bit bigger than a couple of lines. But um, it, that's kind of the lower boundary. Um, but JavaScript itself also has a more, uh, even more, compact mode where not all the features of the JavaScript language are supported and there I think the base footprint is around yeah. 3 kilobytes so that's kind of the the lower bound um, yeah. um, I have a question which is kind of related to the one for garbage collection mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, how much of a performance hit do you have for uh, you know with you have very little memory so I assume the performance is less good than the yes uh, yeah, so I, I can also say something about that. Um, obviously, uh, performance is, we are in a way, we are also trading space uh, against time. So um, performance is certainly lower than what you get with V8 or a really sophisticated JIT. We, are, um, we only have an interpreter, so um, there's just not, not enough space to do any JIT compilation. And, uh, so probably you want to know how much slower it is uh, compared to, let's say, V8. But I would say a, a ballpark figure is something like 100x or something. I mean, you certainly pay the price for for that. Yeah. There's another one there. Another one, yeah. So, so we have been uh, uh, discussing that and uh, also been looking into um, the difficulty of implementing those features. Um, that's that's certainly something uh, which is which is on our uh, roadmap to do. Um, but right now we are not. We are we are first. Uh, our primary focus right now is uh, to optimize the engine further, and uh, we still want to get a little bit better on performance before we start moving on to uh, a new new. JavaScript standard. Do you have another one? Yeah, uh, no one else sure. has got one. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it occurred to me that, you know, a lot of the time, unlike a browser, a lot of the time, you know, you're going to write your code once for these kind of devices, right? You know, as you do for these kind of Microsoft products. So, have you thought about just compiling it offline? Um, so, so that, that's certainly an alternative that you do uh, ahead of time compilation. Um, we, in this project, we haven't thought about that. Um, I know that other um, people in Samsung, they, uh, if, you, if you attended the Euro LDM conference, there was a presentation about static compilation of uh, JavaScript with uh, LDM. Uh, certainly, that's, that's another approach. But uh, the catch here is that you still, in order to fully support um, all of JavaScript, you will always need to have a, a fallback interpreter unless you restrict the, uh, the, the constructs. Um, allowed in the language. So, yeah, I, I think it's not really a 100% um, solution for if you, if you really want to be uh, flexible and uh, allow all of ECMAScript 5.1. Yeah. Oh, I can ask this way. Like, uh, what's your plan uh, about the hardware This is support? for the internet audience. <laughs> uh, what's the plan about the hardware support? Yeah, so, oh yeah, I, I didn't mention anything about that. So, um, JavaScript itself is very portable. It has pretty much 
uh, no dependencies. It has its own really small libc for all the basic stuff. So you can run it on bare metal um, just fine. We have run it on, <coughs> on ARM, obviously. Uh, we have run it also on the, um, I don't remember the exact name, but in the previous presentation, the Extensa yes, platform, mm -hmm. we have been running it there. So it's, and it was really easy to, to get that running. So basically you just recompile with a proper tool chain for that architecture and it just worked. So uh, it's, it's really portable and uh, getting it to different devices uh, should be really easy. Yeah. I have a question. For yeah. So is, uh, is JavaScript open source? Yes, yes. And do you accept it on open works on GitHub or somewhere? Yes, uh, both projects are on GitHub. And, uh, oh, yeah. uh, both projects are on GitHub and uh, <coughs> fully open, so it's uh, Apache license. Okay. And uh, <coughs> we are looking for contributions. Do you accept pull requests? Yes, definitely. Okay, how fast do you merge them? Is is the uh, the code mentioned about the ESP eighty two sixty six? It's also published on GitHub. Um, I I th I think there's a, a branch right now in the repository. I think it hasn't been merged upstream yet, but uh, it's definitely available as far as I know. Yeah. You mentioned backward compatibility with Node.js. What, what does that mean exactly? And do you support the full standard library that Node.js has, <coughs> as well as maybe MVM package? Yeah, yeah uh, that's a good question. So, so basically, uh, what we mean with backward compatibility um, that you, if you develop something for which runs on IFT.js, it <coughs> will uh, most likely also run on uh, Node.js, not not necessarily the other way around. Because there, so we have a, a, um, a, s a small set of modules are implemented natively, um, but uh, certainly and technically it, it should be fairly straightforward to port them over from Node.js. But you might uh, run into restrictions like memory size, or mm -hmm. so uh, we try. Uh, it's kind of a best effort thing. We try to be um, as compatible within the, the limits we have. <coughs> okay, I do have another one. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what about Arduino and AVR 328? Does it run on, on there with a Ethernet shield or Wi-Fi shield? Yeah. So, so we we haven't we haven't tried that yet, but uh, in theory, I mean, if you if you say AVR, so that's the uh, I know okay. there's a okay. AVR 32 or the that's really the 8-bit architecture. Yeah, 8-bit. <coughs> Yeah, um, I think the 8-bit architecture, that, that will be quite difficult um, because of the address space. So um, I don't think that we will be able to get it run on that. Yeah. That's, that's just too constrained, basically. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I like making you walk. Yeah. <laughs> so so how, do you, how do you program? Uh, let's say you have... Jerry, Jerry Street, running, yeah. uh, running on a <coughs> device. Yeah. How do you program <coughs> your JavaScript? Um, so, so basically, um, we just uh, write the code as in an editor, and then and then we, uh, we essentially flash everything on the device. Okay. And then so, mm -hmm. so do you have the intention of being able to send code to the device while it's running, as we do with the web browser? So you can have like uh, you know, the machines that you throw code at. Yeah. And that, that's certainly uh, uh, something which is very interesting. Uh, we, we haven't uh, started working in that direction, but that's definitely something uh, uh, I think we would, would want to have in the future. Uh, we're also looking into uh, the debug interface to enable uh, live debugging on the device and things like that. So that's still um, work in progress. <coughs> Any other questions? No, I do have one. Another one. Okay. <laughs> so can can you run it on a on a Linux PC without the V8 stack and yep. uh, can you actually have the embedded embedded uh, code running on your uh, standard Linux PC, uh, the same code uh, on your machine without using Node.js and and V8 and all of that? Yeah. 
Yes, so so that works fine. You can can also run uh, JavaScript out either JS uh, under traditional Linux system on the desktop. Um, <laughs> that works just fine. We we do do all of that also for testing, and uh, that's it. Definitely also scales up in that segment. Yeah. All right. Another one. <laughs> Can you speak up for the benefit of people in the room, please? Have you thought about the extensions to JavaScript to allow you more you know, direct access to the machine? Yeah. Um, so, so basically, um, the uh, we we already even in this demo we have a specific module which allows us to access the so so the LED matrices they are um, driven by I squared C. So uh, we and we are controlling that through GPIO. So um, we are exposing that already to the JavaScript code. So we created a kind of native module for that, and then we just uh, use it from JavaScript. So that works today already. Yeah. And uh, the, the second question I think was, uh, do we plan to extend the language itself? So we don't have any plans in that direction. Um, yeah, we, we are mostly focusing on really just implementing what the standard uh, requires, and that's that's all there. Yeah. Okay, another question. Uh, uh, do you have any plans of working together to standardize the APIs used there? Like mm -hmm. accessing JPIOs, you're not the only ones who try to do this, and it would be awesome if it's like a yeah. standardized way to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, we, so far, we haven't uh, made any proposals in that direction. Um, I'm also not sure if we plan to do that, to be honest. So we, we mostly care about creating the platform and then we want the users to... Also, we, we're really looking forward to any feedback on what kind of modules people need. Um, so for us, it's kind of hard. We are, we are developing the technology um, and we, we uh, still don't really know what the users want. And uh, um, we, we are looking very much for feedback for any people working in that space and the requirements they have and so on. So that's, yeah. All right. Any further questions?